All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to night three of our FileMaker live sessions here on Zoom slash YouTube. Uh, my name is Mike, if you haven't been with me yet. Um, this is, like I said, number three of a long series. I don't know how long it's gonna go. I would recommend if you're finding this video sometime down the road that you go back and watch sessions one and two. Uh, so far this week, we've been working on developing our own work note and instrument record database uh, with the idea of the being that we wanna be able to generate and print work notes out from this database based on our instrument records that we imported from LightWrite. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And here we go. So a couple quick housekeeping things as usual. If anybody has any questions, I've got a small group here on Zoom with me that can ask questions. And then those of you watching on YouTube, feel free to throw those questions in the chat and I will get to them as soon as I can. Keep in mind, there is a bit of a delay. Okay, so jumping right in. Uh, so, so far we've looked at two main management features or management sections of FileMaker. We've looked at the database manager where we set up all of our tables originally and we set up our relationships. And then last night we started looking at the script manager where we started writing some of our first scripts. To get to those things, uh, of course, we were under file, manage database or file manage scripts. Tonight we're gonna be looking uh, at the third of those, of, of the three big management uh, screens that we're gonna be working with in FileMaker a lot. So we haven't really talked about creating new layouts yet because when we created those tables, we noticed before we had two layouts that were automatically created for us. What we're gonna be starting with tonight is creating a layout that is designed to be printed on a standard sheet of paper. So far, these uh, ones we've made are not really designed to work on paper. They look really good on the screen. Hopefully yours look really good on the screen. Um, but if we tried to print these, they'd use a lot of extra toner and it really just wouldn't be the most efficient way to organize our data. So let's jump right into that layout manager. So I'm gonna to go to file, manage layouts or command shift L. And you notice right away, let me move this out of the way a little bit here. You notice right away, there's the two layouts we've already had and you see which tables that they are associated with. Uh, and we can ignore the menus and stuff like that for now. Um, so to create a new one, it's as simple as creating as clicking the new button. But before I do that, I want to start organizing this manager a little bit, kind of like we did in the scripts manager, where we started making folders and dividing lines. Even if you think that your solution is going to be pretty simple, I still find it really useful to make sure everything is organized within folders. It just makes things a, a whole lot easier down the road when you're trying to, uh, trying to find that script or trying to find that layout that you might have made a couple of years ago. So instead of clicking on the new button, I'm gonna click on the little arrow next to the new button. And you see that there are some options for, of course, a layout or a folder or a separator. So I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call this folder uh, data entry. And then I'm gonna move those two layouts that I'm already using into that data entry folder. Because those are the places where we're actually entering, physically entering that data in about our show or about our work notes, okay? And now I'm gonna make another folder and I'm gonna call this uh, reports or I'm gonna call it printed reports. Idea there being any kind of report that we make that one day will be printed can go into this folder. Now we could even drill it down even further and create a folder that says work notes inside of that printed reports folder. So we have, uh, you know, we, it say one day we wanted to add some things for our instrument records, stuff like that, we can keep that organization up. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna have a data entry folder and then a nested folder here for my work notes. So once I've got that all kind of arranged the way I like it, and of course we can add a separator if we really wanted to, uh, totally up to you and your style. I'm gonna click on the work notes folder and I'm gonna create a new layout. So when I click on the new button, what you'll notice right away is I have a couple of options that pop up to me as far as what the, the intended target for that layout is going to be. Computer is the one we've been using so far. It's designed to be used on a Mac or on a PC. It's gonna show up on a computer screen. Touch device is just that, it's gonna be an iOS device. And then the one we're looking for today is going to be printer. A um, couple other quick things to keep in mind. It's going to ask you which table you want to show your records from. This can be changed later on, but it's a little bit easier to make sure you have it set up properly the first time. So today we're making a work note printout. So we want to make sure we're showing our records from work notes and we're going to give it a name. We're going to say uh, work notes printed list or whatever you'd like. Uh, and if you notice when I've clicked on printer, now I have a couple of different options. I've got labels, I've got vertical labels, envelopes, and report. We'll get into labels and stuff like that one day, but for today, we're just gonna choose a report 
and click continue. Um, in this particular case, I don't need any kind of subtotaling or grand totals. Think of that, you know, if you're making an inventory sheet or an invoice or something like that, I'm going to try to turn off a lot of the, 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 the helpful stuff that FileMaker gives us so you can really get a sense of, of how to do this from scratch. Um, and now it's going to ask me which fields from my work notes, work notes table I want to show on that layout. Again, this is just the initial setup. As you saw before, I can copy paste. I can add all kinds of different fields later on, add text, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, I pretty much want all of these. So I'm going to move them all over. I'm not going to even worry about sorting them right now because I'm going to move them all around in my layout anyway. I'm going to click Next. Um, and yesterday, if you stuck around to the end, you saw uh, me create a thing called a sub summary where you could sort by like a position or something like that. And it would print that, uh, that bar, bar for you uh, to separate your records. You can basically set that up in advance here. I'm not going to worry about it for now for work notes. I'm just going to click next and ignore it. And we're going to, uh, by default, usually want to sort by node ID. So I'm going to move that in as the default sort right there, ascending order. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, and then I also, I'm not going to put any information on the header and footer in this initial setup. It's just, it's easier just to add the stuff in later on as I want it. And you can add page numbers, et cetera, et cetera, but it's easier to do it later on. Click next. And then it's going to ask me if I want to have a script that will automatically create this report. For now, I'm going to say no. We're going to create a script later on in tonight's session where we can both export these as a PDF as well as send it directly as an email. But for now, no scripts are needed. All right, so when I click Finish, you see after all of those steps, I finally have the layout uh, here in my work notes folder. Chances are it probably opened up for you in the background, but if it didn't, you can click the Open button and then close our Layout Editor, or excuse me, our Layout Manager. And now here we are in an empty layout with not really a lot of useful information in it yet. Um, if you notice, it's created a couple of body par or a couple of parts for us already. It's got a header and a body. First thing I want to do is I'm going to want to add a footer to that. So I'm going to right click out in the gray space, just like we did yesterday, and go to my part setup. And then once I'm in there, I'm going to create a new part. And I'm just going to create a footer and click OK. And it's as simple as that. Click done. So now I've got a header, I've got a body, and I've got a footer. And as a reminder, the body will be each individual record that you want to print. So in this case, each individual work note will be generated as its own body um, in this report. Great. Okay. Uh, if you don't see these rulers on the side of your screen, you can find those by going to view and then rulers, or it looks like option shift command R. Uh, easier probably just to go to view rulers. Uh, right now, these are in points. If you right click on those rulers, you can change them to different units. So obviously for printing, uh, if, you're, if you're in the United States, inches, if you're in any other country, uh, more civilized country, you can go to centimeters. Uh, maybe one day we'll be on centimeters, we'll see. Uh, but you get the idea. We can, we can change these rulers to match what, uh, what our intended device is gonna be. So I might leave it on points if uh, I was doing this on a computer screen, but because I'm making it printed, I want it to be inches in my case. Okay, so those are our rulers. The next step then is to tell FileMaker what size paper this report is gonna be printed on. So to do that, I'm gonna go to File, Page Setup, and you can see right away, it's already gonna be formatted for a letter size piece of paper in portrait mode at 100% scale. So I'm just gonna leave that. Um, if I wanted to do, a, a landscape orientation, I could do that by clicking here. I'm going to leave it portrait for right now. I'm going to click OK. And now the last thing I want to turn on are these two options right here that says uh, view page margins and view page breaks. So right away, you probably didn't notice a whole lot of things change. But as I start to make this layout bigger, you'll notice that while, yeah, my bounds here, my outer bounds got a little bit bigger, my white page is still right here. So it's, it's gonna give me a really great representation of the edge of my page. And if I make this body super big, you'll see it's given me a little dotted break line here of where the page is gonna break to the next one. So I'm gonna just kind of make, I wanna make my footer, eh, let's say three quarters of an inch tall. And I'm gonna move that footer right above that line, boom, so it's right about there, okay? I'm gonna move some of this stuff down here just to kind of get it all in a place where I can move it around later. 
And I'm also gonna just bring this back to where it's supposed to be. Now you'll notice that these margins, like this is right at eight inches. So it's inside a little bit. This is not a full eight and a half. This is gonna use the margins that are set up in your system for that particular page size. So if you're having issues with your margins and stuff, you might need to spend some time either creating a custom page size in your on your system itself or uh, fiddling with your printer a little bit, um, but a little beyond the scope of what we're gonna talk about today. Oops. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Command plus or command minus for zoom. And come back over to the side. And now I'm gonna start laying out this report exactly how I want it to be. Keep in mind that as I'm going through and doing this, every everything that I change size-wise here has an implication on how many pages it's gonna take up or how those pages are gonna wrap. So obviously the most important thing to me is gonna be my body contents. I don't really care as much about what's in the footer uh, or the header, I'm going to want most of my page to be able to be taken up by that body or by each individual body record so that I can um, see as much information as possible at once. Now, there are two ways we could go ahead and start laying out this report. One of those ways is to make, uh, you know, a series of boxes where each work node is kind of large and has a, has a, has a, has a, record or a big box associated with it, kind of like we had our, our work notes boxes laid out before, you know, where it took up a lot of space. Or we could try to format this report to look a little bit more like a table. And I think that's what I'm going to do for this particular uh, demonstration tonight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a header or a, a title at the top here. And I'm going to say work note manager. a little bit nicer, put that at the top of my page. And for now, I think that's really all I'm gonna put. I could put designer name, I could put all that kind of information, anything you would normally put in like a light right header or a spreadsheet header you could put here. Um, but I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple for now, uh, for time's sake. Now, if I was doing this uh, the way we did the other layouts where I wanted everything to be its own individual box, I would just drag all my fields there. I'd bring the body up right underneath it like that. And then when I went into browse mode, I could scroll through and I could see here's all my individual records. But you get the idea of why that might not be our, the, the best idea for, um, for a quick report when I just need to print stuff out. So instead what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna zoom in a little farther and I'm gonna move these field headers or the, the column headers to, up in, uh, to go up into the, it's the actual header of my document here. We'll change that size down to maybe a 10. We'll say, no, we'll start with ID. And then you'll notice right away, I'm gonna start dragging these fields in the body field underneath uh, the, their headers, like so. That align that now of course if you uh, if you I don't think I talked about the alignment tools before you get the smart guides but if I selected both of these things here under um, under the ruler under the position tab you've got some alignment buttons here so I can find them on center here I can or put them you know on horizontal centers all that stuff exists there as well um, one thing I did notice is this ID box is, is kind of poking down into my body a little bit, which could cause me problems later on. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make sure that my padding is off, which it is. And I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so that it fits there. Lovely. Okay. So I've got ID. And next we're going to do, I'm going to ignore most of these other fields here now that I've formatted these two kind of be to, to be the way I want them to be. I'm just gonna leave them on for right now as a way to make sure that I have everything. So note ID, I'm gonna select those, hold down option, drag them over to make a copy, make this a little bit bigger. And we'll say contents. Double click on the field to change what that field is showing me. So I want contents. And we've got, um, let's see here, maybe from. Into, now you start to notice right away, I'm about to run out of space here. I've got a lot more fields that I need to put in. So this is where we could start getting creative with, with sizes and stuff like that. Maybe take these down to a 10. Maybe we'll make them a little bit smaller. 
I know I'm probably never going to have a four digit node ID. If I do, something's probably gone horribly wrong with my production. Um, so I'll keep that where I can see three. Move these over a bit. And as I'm going through this, I can jump back into browse mode to see how these things are starting to lay out. Obviously, there's, you know, the note contents might be a little too long to fit in some of these boxes. But for the purposes of our demo today, I think that's uh, going to be fine. Now, what you might start to realize is as you lay this out, this might be a better report if I do it in a landscape instead of portrait. And so we could come right in to page setup, change it to landscape. And you'll notice now as I zoom back out that I can reset this page boundary and it's going to be that way. And maybe, maybe that's the way to go for this one. Move this back over to the middle. Great. Um, now on a list view like this, probably won't want to include the photos because they'll be too small. So I'm going to delete the photo fields. Um, we'll have, maybe we should probably put the priority closer to the, closer to the ID. Priority. Probably same thing for these other fields here, right? We probably want, oops. If you hold, just like with most programs, if you click and drag and hold down shift, it will constrain it to uh, uh, X or Y axis for you. So you don't have to worry about accidentally messing up your, your layouts that way. This will be type. And status. Now you also might find that as we start to go through this, you might not need some of these fields. Like we might not need the status because we can we can only we could potentially only print uh, work notes of a certain status, and we'll get into how to do that in a bit. Oh, and now we'll do target ID. Now, just like we did before uh, in lesson one, we could add those related fields in here. If I wanted to show more information about the, the lights that these work notes correspond to, but for today's purposes, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna drag this body up to be nice and small right underneath the, uh, the line there. And then let's just add a, a footer here. I'm just gonna say MW lighting. You can also do things under the insert menu here. You can find, you know, insert, insert page number, insert date, time. So maybe we'll add the date here. And you notice it gives you the format for that. It's a text field with curly braces there. So I find it useful to, to always print the current date, maybe even the current time at the bottom of all your reports. Boom, there we go. And now you see we've got those uh, individual uh, records here in a nice little list view. And when I click on preview or go into preview mode, it'll show me exactly what it's going to look like when it prints out on the PDF. Awesome. So again, you can format this however you want to do it. Um, but the idea here being that we, we moved these column headers up into our header so that we know that they're always going to print at the top of my page. And then the body only contains the record contents or only contains the fields for those record contents. I could, uh, you know, in my solutions, I have two different work note views. I have one that's like this, and then I have one that is a detailed view that looks a little bit more like our computer layout that we made yesterday. That one has, you know, the pictures, uh, the information about the instruments, all that kind of stuff. But sometimes you need both. And what can also be super helpful, I'm gonna slide these all over just a little bit, is to give yourself a little checkbox on the side so that you could print a little a little box, a little uh, list to have at the table with a little square next to it. So people can, you can actually physically check the notes off if you wanted to. That's up here under the, uh, the shapes tool. So let's grab that and I'm gonna make it um, black. Now, when I go back to browse, you know, boom, this doesn't actually do anything. Like clicking on it does nothing because it's just a shape. But when I print it, I have a little box that now the person I've given this to can actually check out their, um, uh, their check off their notes as they do them. So pretty cool. One more thing we want to look at before we go on is uh, being able to shade alternate rows. So right now, this is pretty easy to read. But if this whole page was filled up with notes, you might find it kind of hard uh, to delineate across those lines. So like, okay, you know, as you're looking through, your, your eyes are going to start getting crossed. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our body is set up to have what's called an uh, active and alternate row states. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna define what our background color is based on if it's an active or an alternate state. So I'm gonna go back into my layout editor here, Command L, and I'm just gonna right click. Oops, I'm gonna right click over here where it says body and I'm gonna click on part definition. And now you can see I've got options here to do alternate and active. Active when we're printing isn't super isn't as important because we're not going to be clicking on anything, but alternate is super important because that's what's going to basically say, you know, A, B, A, B when it comes to formatting. So I'm going to make sure I turn on alternate row state. And then with, with the body uh, thing over here still selected, I can come into my appearance editor in the inspector and I can edit what that alternate background looks like. And you see by default, it's already slightly gray. So yeah, I'll go with, that's a little, probably a little too dark. Maybe we go color picker, make it just off white enough that it's gonna look different. Now, when I go back into browse mode, you can kind of, maybe you can see it, maybe you can't, maybe I should make it a little darker. Um, but you see that alternating rows have been um, shaded to be Go a little extreme. There you go. Alternating rows have been shaded to help, really strictly to help you manage and, and visualize what data is on what lines. Now, unfortunately, in FileMaker, this is a question that gets uh, that I've always had, and as far as I know, uh, FileMaker 19 has not done anything to solve this problem. But you probably notice, like right away, these contents it doesn't all fit in that box. There is not, to the best of my knowledge, a way to dynamically resize the font to make it all fit inside that box. Now you can get creative with scripts where let's say you had you know, a script that figures out the length of the total characters in there and then based on the length of characters gives you different boxes and stuff. But that's a lot of work. Um, and I think what would be way more handy is if we just had an option to say fit contents inside of it. So I'll be honest, I have not looked in 19 yet to see if that's been something that's and added, but I doubt it because that's always kind of been the case. So what I might do in that particular instance is maybe I'll take this font size down uh, and maybe make this box a little bit bigger, try to figure out ways that I can get it to give me two lines worth of text yet still be readable inside of this row. And what that means, what that means is going to be different to every person. So for today, I'm just going to pretend like we can read it just fine and, uh, and we're good to go. Even just making it that little bit smaller made it made it fit. And again, that's an example of when having a, a list view like this is is handy versus having a, uh, a, a big table view or a big or record view when in record view, you could put all that information there easily. Okay, so we've got this layout looks great. How do we print it? So the easiest way uh, without any kind of scripting is I can come right in here and click on file, uh, export records or print export records. I'm oh, sorry, that's the wrong wrong button, not export records, file, uh, save records as PDF. And then just like that, it's going to ask me where I want to save it. Um, I can say, I'll call it uh, work notes. Click on this little button that says automatically open. And then when I save it, there, now Acrobat has opened and I've got a PDF of my work notes. But that's a lot of steps. And maybe that's fine with you. That's not a problem. You can do it that way. You can do it manually. You can go into that report, print them, whatever. Gives you some options there. You know, of course, if you want to sort them or only so short, show certain ones, you can do that too. For example, if I only wanted to see focus notes, I could click find, search for focus. And now when I go to uh, save records as PDF, save it again there and now it's only those ones but again that's pretty tedious and a whole lot of work and extra steps especially when at the end of the night all you want to do is get out of the theater and go back home or go back to your housing so let's figure out a way that we can automate some of that work using scripts so to start out we're going to open up our script editor command shift s or file manage scripts you can also get there by clicking on scripts and then, oh, is there not a, I guess there's not an option to open it there. Anyway, um, and I'm gonna do a little bit of organization to start out here. I'm gonna make a folder and I'm gonna call this folder printing scripts. Now I'm gonna make a new script and I'm gonna call this PDF work notes 
I'm just going to label it simple today for our purposes because we're going to, I'm going to kind of show you three different levels of complexity here, starting with a very basic, simple way, then a uh, slightly more involved way, and then, um, uh, and then, uh, and then a more advanced way. Note that you can't see. Oh, never mind. Okay, great. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell uh, FileMaker where I want to go. I'm going to do a go to layout. Click there and I'm going to choose that layout that we just made. Now you start to see why having an organizational system is handy, especially as you start to add more and more work, uh, layouts to your show. So I'm going to go to layout. I'm not going to worry about an animation because again, that's for the iOS devices. And an important step here is going to be a show all records. So this basically means no matter where I left it. So if I would have accidentally left my work notes display on only showing focus notes before, and then I would run this script, it would have only printed those notes. So I want to do a show all records to make sure I'm printing all of them. And then I'm going to sort those records. I'm going to turn the dialog box off because I want it to be automatic. And then let's think about how we typically would sort records. Some people might sort them by who they're assigned to. Um, I typically would want to uh, do them first by priority. So the high priority notes are going to be at the top. And then within that, what type they are. And then within that, what the uh, note ID is. So you know it's going to sort in this order. You can do whatever you want there. It doesn't really matter. So I'm sorting records by that. And then the final step, or not the final step, but the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make sure that my page is formatted the way that I want it to be formatted. So when we were messing around with that earlier, we went to File, Page Setup. I'm going to do a similar thing here. I'm going to start typing in Setup, and you see right away I've got a Print Setup option. Um, I can leave the dialog on if I wanted to, if I wanted to choose my page size and stuff like that every single time. But because we know that this is always going to be an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in landscape orientation, I'm just going to turn that dialog off. And then in my little settings icon here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to specify letter size, landscape, OK. It might not seem like that did much, but if we had another layout that was in portrait orientation, we want to change that print setup back and forth with our different scripts in order to make sure that the page is always going to be formatted the way we want it to be. Okay, so now we've set up, we've got our printer size put in there. Next thing we're going to do is go into preview mode. Enter preview mode. And then we're going to save records as PDF. So again, same menu function that you saw before. Um, I'm going to leave the with dialog option on. And then here within the, uh, the, the settings, I can actually specify some options for that. I can say the records being browsed, only the current record. Typically, when we're doing this, we want to be records being browsed because it's going to show us anything that uh, is active or anything that we have found or, or uh, sorted by in our in our layout. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm actually going to undo that for now. Okay. Save records as PDF. So once that happens, then your system kind of will take over from there. It's going to create the PDF. You're going to save it. But if we left our script exactly the way it was, if we left it like this, we'd be going back into FileMaker, kind of left in preview mode like this on our work notes. And so it would be extra clicks to get back to wherever we wanted to be. So instead, the next thing I'm going to do is go back into browse mode by doing an enter browse mode step. And then finally, I'm going to do another go to layout. And I'm going to leave this as original layout. So if you do not specify a layout for FileMaker to take you to, it will by default take you to whatever the layout was where you originally started. So think about this if we we're thinking about it from an EOS standpoint, think of it as like a sneak FileMaker or FileMaker sneak enter. It's going to restore you back to wherever you were, whatever your background state was, wherever your background view or layout was before you ran this script. So boom, just about it. Now, obviously, I left white space in here just so it was easier to, uh, to see on your screens, but you can delete that white space if you want. I'm going to save that script. I'm going to run that script. And right away, it's asking me uh, to save that PDF. Automatically open file. And let's see if it worked. Right there, it's given me my, uh, my work notes. 
and then of course it took me to browse mode here because I was I was on this screen. But if let's say I started on my instrument sheet and I click this button, you'll see it all happening in the background. And if I move an acrobat out of the way here, you see it has now dumped me back into wherever I started from. If you don't want to see your windows changing like that, um, you can add at the very top here, add a, a, a command that says freeze window, and that will uh, prevent some of that stuff from happening. Um, most of my scripts, I start out with a freeze window and I do some also, also some other stuff with error capturing and things like that. Um, but we're going to get into that a little bit more depth in, the fu in future lessons. Great. So right there, there's your, there's your simple PDF work note, uh, PDF work note um, script that will, you know, you click the play button here and it's automatically going to generate that PDF for you. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's great, but maybe I don't want to necessarily just have a list of all of my work notes in the show. And we're going to get to that in a second. Um, before we dive into uh, sorting them and, and only printing certain ones, I want to look at the options for how to automatically append that or attach that PDF to an email. So FileMaker has a, two different ways you can send emails from within the program. One of them is you can put your email server settings directly into the program. That's okay, uh, but it's all gonna happen in the background behind you. You don't get a chance to like proofread the email or anything like that. And the only really confirmation that you get that it's sent is by either CCing yourself or checking your sent folder within your email client to make sure that it's sent. The other way and the way I prefer to do it is by automatically uh, use it by, by telling FileMaker to use your desktop email client. So in my case, that's Mac Mail. It can be Outlook. It can be any, any of the default mail apps or, uh, or applications you have on your computer. Um, so, and that gives you a chance to proofread your email before it goes out and make sure everything is right and manually send it versus automatically sending it. Now, there are times for the automatic send. For example, those of you who participated in my previous contest, you know you would get emails from the system. Um, those emails were all generated from within FileMaker where I could click a single button and it would go record by record and, and send those emails as it needed to. That was okay. When I'm sending out work notes, I want a little bit more control over it. Okay, so let's jump in here and create a new script. I'm going to call this new script. Uh, let's do email work email email PDF work notes, and we'll call this one simple again just to make it clear. Now, one of the nice things about the script editor here is I can copy paste things between scripts as well as so if I wanted to do this, I could paste this all onto the same script, or I could select all of these things. And I could copy paste them over into this script, which is exactly what I want to do right now, because I don't want to rewrite a lot of these things from scratch again. So I'm just creating some white space for me here so that I can then pull these things in as I might need them again, just to save myself a little bit of time. So what are the inherent challenges that we might have when creating a, a, a PDF to email? Probably the most important one is that PDF doesn't need to just be created on your system, it now also has to be attached to the email. Somehow we have to be able to tell our email client where to find that attachment. So it's not as simple anymore as just exporting the PDF. Now we've got to automate a little bit of that so that the system knows where that PDF is and it can go in and grab it and attach it to the email. So this is where variables are going to come into play. So we're going to be using a combination of variables and some of FileMaker's get functions in order to put that PDF on our desktop or really anywhere you want it. Today, we're going to be using the desktop and then automatically tell our mail client where to go to find the attachment. So I'm going to start out by defining a variable. I'm going to say set variable. And I'm going to call this variable desktop path. And sometimes when I'm starting to do complex uh, scripts like this, I start using camel case for my variables. I think it's a good rule of, of thumb to be in, especially if you're doing multiple words. Variables can't have spaces in them um, for obvious reasons because it doesn't know how to, it wouldn't, it would just think you had that first word. So if you have separate words, I think using camel case is the best way to delineate those things. Um, so the name of the variable is going to be desktop path. Again, it's going to be a local variable. Um, which is a, a designated by just a single dollar sign. More on that in yesterday's video. And then for the value, I'm going to click on specify here, and I'm actually going to make a calculation to figure out where that desktop is. So if we start searching over here under our get functions, you see FileMaker has a ton of different things that it can get for you and, and return back to you. So I want get desktop type or get desktop path. 
So what that's going to do is it's going to return for me into this desktop path variable, the system path, uh, the, you know, C, uh, Windows, uh, users, Mike Wood or Mac, you know, whatever it needs to do to get to that path to my desktop. If you wanted to have a custom path here, you could also do that. And instead you could say, put it in, you know, this Dropbox folder, but then you would have to manually type in that path for that variable, which if you're doing it once is fine. Um, there's also a thing that FileMaker uses called a temp path, but we'll get into that to another day in another day. So anyway, variable desktop path, get desktop path. And then the next thing we're going to do is we want to define what our file name is going to be. So we're going to set another variable. And we're going to make this a local variable called file name. And we're just going to call this worknotes.pdf. Boom, just like that. So now I've got two, two important parts of telling the, uh, the mail client where to get that attachment from, but I need to join them together. So I'm going to do a third variable. And I'm going to call this file path, because this is going to be the full file path to get to the actual file. And this is going to be a calculation of file, or excuse me, desktop path, then ampersand, and file name. So basically what it's doing is it's concatenating these two things together to give me a, a single variable that is those two things combined. Now you might be thinking to yourself, couldn't I just do that all as one calculation? And the answer is yes, absolutely. These three variables could be condensed down to one, but for the purposes of learning, I think it's important to kind of go step by step and see what's happening. Great, so I've got those, those three things. That's how I've started to set up my, my file path. Next thing I know, I'm gonna to wanna to go to the layout. So I'm just gonna move that back up where I'm gonna use it. I know I'm gonna to wanna to show all the records again. Um, now, yeah, we wanna do a sort again. We're definitely going to do a print setup, preview mode. Now here's where things will get uh, uh, can can change a little bit. Now you can you can do if if we're doing it where we're using the email client and not the built-in email server within this right here, um, this this uh, save records as PDF. I can actually create uh, an email with the file as an attachment on its own. But the challenge with that, if I did that, is it's just going to create a blank email for me with that as an attachment. It's not going to worry about any of this other stuff I've set up. And I'd have to then manually go in and type a subject, type a two line, type all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually just going to, um, I'm going to leave this, let me think here. I'm going to leave this like this. And I'm going to now specify where I want to save the file. And I'm not going to do anything with this email right here. I'm going to say output file is going to be file path, just like that. And now I'm going to add a new script that is send mail. Lots of options here that we can configure. So the first thing is with dialog. If you turn dialog off, it's just going to send it to your email client and send it in the background. If you leave dialog on, it's going to attach it to the email and open up that email message for you to send manually. So I'm going to go into settings here and you can see I've got a whole lot of options. I've got a subject I can define here. So I can say work notes. I can say attached are today's work notes. And then under attach files, I'm going to define the path, I could define that file that I, I specified before. So again, I'm just going to use file path. We're good to go. You can attach multiple things to the to your email, which is great. And in this particular case, I'm not going to put a two or anything in there. But if you're going to always send your email, your work notes to the same people, you could put those in that box. I'm going to click OK. Uh, and then these two things I had before, I definitely am going to want again. So really, all we've done to this script is we have our original script here. We added some variables at the top of it. We added a, the the step here to send the email. And then the, the end of it is still the same. So I'm going to save that. And now when I run that, oh, I'm going to save it again. I'm going to say, yes, records being browsed. And it opened in my other window over here. But here it is. Here's a Mac mail window with the attachment. 
the body text that I put in there and the subject line that I put in there. Anything that I would have put in those other boxes would also show up here. And all I would need to do is click the send button and my work notes would be sent just like that. So pretty cool, pretty easy to do. Um, that little dialogue that popped up, uh, that's because that save records as PDF was set to on here. Now, if I do this, boom, it'll do it all manual or all automatically for me. And there we go. So question just came in on the Zoom chat. Uh, can we specify sending email if we use multiple emails on Apple Mail? No, it will use the default email address um, for, from your Mac Mail. Um, account. As far as I know, I've never been able to figure out a way to, to specify a uh, email account. You can obviously change that here once you get to there, but you can't tell FileMaker to do it. Um, another thing that's important to note, you do need to have an actual email client installed on your computer. If you use Gmail in the web browser and your default web, or excuse me, your default mail client is set up to be Chrome or something like that, FileMaker will not be able to do anything with that. You have to have an actual program to, uh, to send mail from to use these scripts this way. Okay, so that's pretty cool, but this is pretty impersonal. And once again, all we're really doing here is sending uh, sending work notes, uh, all the work notes to a specific person. I don't, you know, the, the subject is pretty generic. The text is pretty generic. There's gotta be a way I can personalize these things a little bit more. And the answer is absolutely there, there is. Um, another question just came in, for a list of who you send messages to, would you create a table of people involved within their show, their contact email, contact info, and pull in emails from this table? Yes, 100%. So, for example, in my, if you go, if you go back and watch my video on my FileMaker solution that I posted a couple months ago, you'll see I've got a. You set up all the people in your show as you're setting up your show, and then you can associate those people with their different positions, and then it will automatically find that email address for you and send it to the right person. It gets a little more complex. Maybe we'll get into that one day, um, but for now, we're gonna keep it a little simpler than that. But I am gonna, I am about to show you how to go ahead and generate notes for specific people and generate custom emails and custom reports based on those specific people that you choose. So I'm just gonna close this email draft. And let's see here, uh, let me look at my list. So we talked about variables a little bit so far, and pretty much everything we've been using when it comes to variables has been local variables. So to refresh you, a local variable is a single dollar sign in front of it, and it's a variable that is only used in the current script that you're working in. A global variable, which has two dollar signs in front of it, is used throughout your entire file until you close the file again. So once I've defined a global variable, it persists in that file until the file is closed. So for example, I could have made desktop path a global variable. If I know that I'm gonna use desktop path multiple places in my show or in my file, I might set up a startup script that every time the program starts up, it sets that global variable in the background. You can do that with IP address, uh, uh, desktop paths, screen resolutions, all kinds of stuff that you can then use later on in your scripts and you don't have to redefine them every single time. So super handy. So let's go ahead and we're going to create another folder here within our printing scripts. And we're gonna call this by assignee. Make sure this is inside, it is inside my printing scripts folder. I'm gonna make a new script and I'm gonna call this email, excuse me, email assignee work notes. Okay. So once again, I have a lot of the same things I'm probably going to need again here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to copy paste all of these steps for uh, this other script. I've got a couple comments here on YouTube. Uh, yes, the, the, the variable is per user. Yeah, so it's going to be local to your, to your user that you're currently doing stuff with which can get a little complicated when you're starting to deal with uh, multi-device stuff, which we're gonna cover a little bit tomorrow. Okay, once again, I'm just adding white space at the top to give me some space to work in. Okay, so yesterday, if you stuck around to the very end, you saw me do some uh, a thing called uh, script parameters. So if you haven't, if you didn't stick around and watch that, I recommend you go back and watch that. I'm gonna show you a little bit of, of what that means now. 
Um, but what a script par parameter allows us to do is pass along a piece of information. It can be a string, it could be a number, it could be something um, from a button or from an object into the script so the script knows the context of what it needs to do. So for example, yesterday we made these buttons here on our instrument records and we said, when you click this button, perform this field uh, with the context of, or with the script parameter of purpose. So this button sent that script, the purpose parameter, and then the script took that and knew what to do with it based on that. So we're gonna use kind of the same idea here to, um, to figure out, to, to set who we want our notes to go to, and also to give us a, a, a header at the top that tells us on the report exactly who that report is for and who the notes are assigned to, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to data entry and I'm going to go, not data entry, excuse me, printed reports, work notes, printed list. And you notice I strategically left a little space in my header here under work note manager, uh, a little bit of white space there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add another text box. I'm going to not make that not bold. And you can pass information from a variable or from a field in FileMaker by putting that in uh, double carrots like this. So I'm going to do double carrots. And I'm going to call this, um, I'm just going to say print title. That way I can use it for multiple things. And I'm going to close that with two, two carrots like that. Make it italics. Now, when I go into browse mode, nothing's going to show up there because I have not defined what that variable is yet. I have had no way of, I, the FileMaker does not know what I want there. See back in layout view, it's still there, but it's just disappeared because I don't have data in it yet. So let's go ahead and add that data into our, into our solution. So first thing I wanna do before I go in and create that script is I'm actually gonna create another table that's gonna be kind of like a administrative table, basically to give me a layout to be able to put buttons that don't necessarily correspond to work notes or to instruments on. So I'm gonna go into my database manager, file, manage database, under tables, I'm going to make a new table that just says admin. And I'm going to create it. I'm going to delete all the existing fields. And uh, the first thing we want to put there is going to be work note, work note assignees. So now again, I've created a table with a single field in it that's just work note assignees. I'm not even gonna define a relationship for that right now. Later on down the road, as we start adding things, you might find a place where we need to have some relationships. Um, but for now, we're just gonna keep it as a separate table. Now, the question might come up, why do it as a separate table? Why not just put this button where you're gonna put the print these assignee work notes on your work note sheet? And the challenge there is it has to do with uh, scaling this later on down the road and accidentally deleting data. Remember I showed you yesterday, the delete all records button will delete things based on the current table you're on. So I try to keep things as uh, segregated as possible so that if you're on, let's say the work note thing and you meant to delete something from your admin uh, fields, you can't accidentally delete all your work notes. So once we've created that table, we'll notice right away it has created a layout for us with just that simple, uh, that simple field on there, admin, work note assignees. And as you might imagine, before I go any further, I'm gonna organize this a bit. I'm gonna put this admin into a new folder called admin, just to help future-proof myself a little bit here. Boom. Okay. And so now what I can do is I can edit this layout. And if you remember on day one, we made some value lists and that val one of the value lists we made is the person value list. So I'm going to change the entry style of this particular field to be a drop down list values from people. And that's about it. Yeah. Good. Come to browse. I forgot to add the um, I forgot to add the uh, drop down arrow. There we go. Now I can specify a person. I can say, uh, let's do production electrician. 
Great, well, that hasn't actually done anything yet, right? So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna create a button that takes the information that I have put into this, into this field and passes it along to my script as, as that script parameter. So we're gonna create a new button like this. And I'm just gonna make it a little icon and we'll maybe we'll use the mail icon for this. And do, 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 do. we're gonna say that, that button will perform a script. That script mm -hmm. is the email assignee work notes. And then right here under script parameter, we're gonna define that script parameter as this field. So I'm gonna click on edit. And of course that's the only field in this table. So I'm gonna say that. And that's basically all there is to it. So now when I click that button, it's going to find whatever text is in this field and pass it along to my email assignee work notes script as that parameter. Great. So that's enough with that layout for now. Let's come back over here into our actual script. So now we have to figure out how to start using that data. So first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to start figuring out um, I'm going to start figuring out what my, uh, I'm going to start putting this information into variables. I'm going to say set variable. And we'll say, uh, let's call this one title prefix. And then the value for that is going to be get script. Type, nope. Still getting used to this new keyboard. Get script parameter. Title prefix. And now I'm going to set another variable that takes this and it's going to be, uh, let's say, print title. This is going to be a global variable. Remember, we set up before. So now I'm defining what that, um, that global is going to be. Print title. And now we're going to make this our first variable, title prefix, and quote, because now there's going to be some text, a space, and the word work notes, and another quote. So whenever we're doing this, uh, you know, the title prefix, that's not going to have any spaces at the end of it. So I'm going to make sure that I've included the space that I want between my words at the beginning of this text, just text string right here before work notes. So what this is going to do is it's going to set that title or that um, the, the print title global variable that we set up before as, let's say, production electrician space work notes. Okay, great, good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start setting up our, our paths again. Now, some of this stuff we've already done, so I'm just gonna drag these up. File name, file path. I could even, if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could add, uh, you know, production electrician to the front of this of this title if I wanted to. Um, but I'll leave it for now. Now you start to notice it starts to get a little complicated, so I'm going to start organizing this a little bit using the pound sign or the hashtag sign, um, depending on what year you were born. That's how you add a comment. So I'm just going to say these are setting up my titles. This one is setting um, F paths. Next up, we're going to actually create the PDF. It's pretty much all of these things are about the same as they were before. Oh, great. File path. Again, I don't have to worry about changing any of this because I've already tested it to work. Whoops. about that. I've already tested all of these steps that I know work. I'm really just adding a few things to them. So next up, I'm going to do uh, my send email. But now I can start using some of this information that I've had before in the body of the of the email. So I could say, let's specify this, uh, specify a calculation. I could say work notes or with a space and then do and and what did we set that variable as before? Title prefix. So we can call that title prefix. Yeah. Now when I click OK, I save that and I run it. 
Oh, I can't. So you can't run it from the thing, obviously, because I need to run it from my screen here. So when I click the button to run it, it's created an email for me now that says work notes for production electrician. And you notice at the top of that PDF, it's made that title exactly how we wanted it. It's passed along that script parameter from this box using this button into that, that global variable field. And then if we go here, if we go into our, uh, our data viewer, we see that that has been now defined and it's gonna stay there until either the program is closed or we redefine that variable again. So if I leave this open kind of down the side here, let's say I change this, I wanna look at work notes for the, well, first let's see, who do we have work notes for? Um, let's say work notes for the associate lighting designer. I click that button, just like that. Um, it created it. Now, what you might notice is that it didn't actually only print those notes for that particular position. So what we can do is we want to go back in and we want to add one more step to our script that's going to perform a find to only find the notes that are associated with that particular person. So we're getting closer. So to do that, that's going to be all the way back here. After we do show all records, we want to do a perform find. And we want that find to be find records where work notes assigned to equals title. Now I could also make, you know, define this as two different things. I could one that just says, says like person or something like that. Totally up to you. Find records where the assigned uh, assigned to equals title prefix. Now with that one little extra step in there, when I come back in here and I run this again, you'll notice it's now created a PDF for me with only the work notes associated with the associate lighting designer. So you get the idea pretty quickly, hopefully, of how powerful that can be. Um, that's all good. Now, one other thing I will caution you about, something I would recommend that you do, uh, we've got about five minutes left or so, is uh, start using variables for a lot of this stuff as well. So what I could do here is instead of saying, defining my subject there, I could say this is going to be email subject. And this could be email body. Now I can set those variables with separate script steps. Or in your admin uh, table, you could create fields for these things and automatically pass that information along. Attach our today's work notes, and then we're going to give this a label here of setup. A label, we might as well label it all, right? Great. So there's our script that's going to basically do all of that. It's going to be, it's going to set up the title. It's going to automatically put that title onto our layout for us. It's going to create a PDF for us. It's going to attach a PDF to an email, and then it's going to drop the subject and the body of that email in all, all with a single click of a button. So again, if we do production electrician, click the button, there's our email, work notes for production electrician. There's the body, the subject, et cetera, et cetera, just like that. So pretty cool. Um, great. Are there any other questions before? I think that's just about it for today. Uh, for tomorrow, I'm going to be going over how to take this and make a mobile layout for it and how to share your solution over a network. So for example, you could have your iPhone or your iPad and you could create work notes and mark work notes as done. And most importantly, I think take photos from your iPhone for those work notes. Remember we added that photo field. Let's say the light is messed up you'll be able to open it right up, click on add a photo and be all done. So that'll be tomorrow night. Um, I will hang out for a couple more minutes if anybody has any other questions. Otherwise, thank you all for joining me and I will see you tomorrow.
right, got a couple questions coming in here. When you're done printing to return to the screen you like, you'd add another step to the script, go to layout. Yeah, so that's actually what this last thing does right here. It's go to layout original. Um, if you don't specify which layout you wanna go to, it's gonna dump you back into whatever layout uh, you started running the script from. So in this particular case, it was here on this admin page or in this admin layout. Um, if I wanted to, I could specify that going back to any of my layouts. Um, but I find that when you're doing printing scripts like this, you want to usually end back up where you started from and not in a new window. Same thing with like importing and stuff like that. Watch my add that freeze window thing to the top of this too. Ah, crap. And I click the button. all that stuff is happening in the background now and we don't see our window flash around anymore, which is super nice. So again, that's just by adding a, uh, a freeze window command at the top. I find when you're developing your solution for the first time and you're testing, it's better to, to not put the freeze window in there so you can see where your problems are. And actually one more quick thing, so it seems, since it seems like we still have most of our viewers on YouTube and, and Zoom, um, I'm gonna show you how to debug this script as well. So you can actually see all this happening in real time. I tried to do this yesterday, but I hadn't practiced it. So it was kind of a mess. Um, I'm gonna go to tools, script debugger, put that right about here. Now, when I click on this button, I can now go step-by-step step through my script we open up our data viewer here, you can see this data coming in in real time. And as I go step by step, you see all of these things that we've started to define happening. So right there, there's our file name, there's our desktop path, there's our uh, file path, you know, it appended those or concatenated those things together. And you see it all happening step by step, which can be invaluable when you're trying to figure out um, what the heck is going on with your uh, with your thing if it's not working properly? Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut the YouTube stream. Uh, those of you in Zoom, if you want to hang out, if you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I will see all of you YouTubers tomorrow.